Hi there. Um, I want to say a few words about why this is happening. Um, because I think it's important to, to, to set what's happened today in the wider context of what has been happening across Europe and across the world over the last few years. Um, most, of the, most of the reporting in the mainstream media of the referendum has kind of treated it as a kind of a, a, a little local difficulty of, of David Cameron, and it certainly is that. But if you look at every country across Europe, you see a very similar pattern to Britain. Austerity being imposed, sometimes on unwilling governments uh, in, in, in Greece, Italy, places like that, uh, or willingly by governments in Germany, Britain and, uh, and, and France. As this austerity gets imposed, a whole load of people in the, in the middle of society who would normally just go out and vote for a Labour Party or vote for a Conservative Party lose their faith and drop away. So you've seen a collapse of social democratic parties across Europe and a collapse in support for traditional right-wing parties as well. Now how do they respond to that? They want to impose austerity, but they're losing support. And the way they do it is they say, well, I'm going to blame immigrants, we're going to blame the blacks, we're going to blame the Muslims. And so racism becomes the key method by which these parties shore up their support. Of course, that leads, that leads to a very, very, very dangerous dynamic, because the moment they start doing that, the people who they wind up, and the people who buy into the, 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 the ideas of anti-immigrant stuff and racist stuff, they just want more. So you see the rise of far-right parties, UKIP here, AFD in Germany, uh, again, across Europe. And, and so the, the cycle continues. And you're now seeing uh, the Schengen Agreement, which is the agreement that set up Fortress Europe, but brought down the internal border controls inside Europe. That is falling apart. I think not just in Britain, but everywhere in Europe, you're going to see more internal borders, more governments, uh, including nominally left-wing ones, turning around and saying the way we can shore up our, our voter base is by attacking migrants. And the forces that are making that happen are huge. They're global economic forces that are, it's very easy to just kind of stare at and feel completely trapped by. But I do think there is something we can do. We do need to actually start building a mass popular grassroots anti-racist movement to counter this. That, that is really, really urgent. I, I say it has to be popular because it has to be big. You know, if we don't start winning the hearts and minds of ordinary people across, across Europe to this perspective, which is currently a minority one, we're lost. And it also has to catch the anti-austerity mood. The, the thing that's driving this behind it is, is neoliberals and austerity being imposed and wrecking people's lives. I saw a poll today that showed that um, basically that one of the biggest things that, that Leave voters believed is that they didn't think things would get better for their children and for the next generation. And you know what? I think that that assessment is probably pretty accurate if we don't stop it. Now, at the moment, I think, I also want to say why I think it needs to be a grassroots movement. Because I don't think we can trust politicians on this one. I've explained the reasons why. They will always seek to try to, on the one hand, put out a kind of polite message of cosmopolitanism, on the other hand, viciously attack one group or another. They will try to divide the people at the bottom of society. Are you a Londoner or are you a Northerner? Are you an EU immigrant or are you non-EU? Are you a migrant worker or are you a refugee? And we have to actually spot those, spot those games before they get running and argue against them. And that means having a hard, hard position of defence of all migrant rights, a migrant justice position that opposes all immigration controls and all borders. Um, as I said, it, it's a bleak picture. I'm not going to, I'm not going to kind of, you know, be triumphalist about anything. It is a bleak picture. And it's a bleak picture across Europe and it's a bleak picture across the world. But we can do something about this and we have to start now. Thank you.